Welcome to N Generation Project Rebroadcast of Daily Excellence, podcast number 40, where we join Mike from Council of Time, who talks taking proactive measures. Discover the insightful teachings of Michael from COT. COT. By visiting COTs. COT. Only official website provided in the description. Take a deep dive into topics like biblical prophecy, eschatology, and spiritual growth. We encourage everyone to join the COT community mission is dedicated to spreading the message of God's word in these end generation times. Support their mission and explore the transformative power of their resources today. Mike from Council of Time talks taking proactive measures. Now before we get to the rebroadcast of Mike from Council of Time talks taking proactive measures podcast episode number 40. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for daily excellence in your life. These Council of Time rebroadcast podcasts are posted daily on our channel, usually after 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our YouTube channel and Generation Project began with one objective, to disseminate God's holy word across the nations. As we have stood firm in the belief that there is an immediate hunger for sound biblical knowledge, we are so grateful, and thanks to viewers like you, and your support, we are doing it day by day. Now, let's get into today's message. Mike from Council of Time talks taking proactive measures rebroadcast podcast number 40. Peace out, everyone. Blessings. God bless everybody out there. Finally made it. Just in case you don't know, my name is Mike. Let me format this. I hope you guys are doing quite well today. Today we're going to have a QA. and a It won't be a long broadcast. It won't. Pretty sure of that. It won't. I am incredibly... I think I've been going for too long, right? Very close to that burnout uh, uh, edge. I am. I, I wouldn't advise anybody to uh, stay awake for two, three days straight. Don't do that. Not wise. I remember one time back in the past, I was up for, well, if it becomes usual, uh, something normal. If you do that for a while, but it's not healthy. But the reason I was up is because of global events. We have, when I was going through vetting, uh, certain things that are happening in the world, looking at data, hard data, uh, it, it really does indicate that we have problems, big problems. Crime has gone up 200%, 200% in the USA. Uh, crime has also gone up in the UK. There's been a confidence shakeup, which will no doubt translate into markets probably somewhere around next week. Uh, of course, that always happens. The nature of crimes is beginning to shift, right? Riots are breaking out. Can you believe that? Riots. And I was also looking in the schools to see where they stand. And it looks like drug issues are in every school. What I mean by that is I was specifically looking at blind spots in the schools that we have in the USA. Bathrooms. Most schools have zero, no plan concerning uh, security in the bathrooms. Students are taking pictures of other students when they do certain things in the bathroom. Drugs are being traded, right? And I like to look deep into things, and so I contacted a few of those schools just to see what their procedure was. When you report something like that, they will not hear you. They won't. They won't hear you. They won't hear, they won't receive an anonymous report. They won't do it. And so... Of course, that's going to raise a stink. I have to take that two steps forward. Probably nine or ten. But it's bad. This, this was in uh, the majority of the high schools in the USA. Middle schools, are they're no better. They're no better. Things are happening in the schools that are just destroying our children. Children can't tell their parents. If the parents get involved, the child puts themselves at risk. Due to threats, right? 
But there is no anonymous reporting system. And there is no validated reporting system. And so I sent out a series of communications to a few governors. To some of the top, uh, some of the top people who are in charge of education, that's going to be tackled. So yes, I raised that issue, and I'm going to keep raising that issue. It's very dangerous. And all of us remember what it was like in school when we were there, and it's enough stress dealing with uh, school itself. But when you have, when you have to deal with the a corrupted social environment that looks one way on the outside. But on the inside, it's uh, you have to navigate very carefully. No, we can't do that. Right? They're not uh, investing enough money in repair of that. They're not. So it should be one of America's number one issues. Right? Hmm. Not good. Not good at all. Yeah. Somebody said, Mr. Mike, I know from personal experience as a school counselor, uh, it's just that the administration only cared only cared for dollars, made me sick, yes. Yeah, they care about money, and it, which is why I stepped over everybody's head to, to cause the biggest stink I can in this nation. I did that on purpose, so I'm just letting you guys know that. And I am pursuing that because it is, you know, with the children, if we don't raise the children right, my, I know a lot of people, listen, I don't want to turn this into a political conversation, but you have a lot of people, they always point out problems at the end of a matter. Listen to me carefully. If we do not take care of our children, right, we're not taking care of our future. We're not. The kids are the future, and without the children, there is no future. None. Zip zero. So what's the point of anything else? If we have no one to carry on any of those good value traditions we have in each respective nation. No, it's not going to work. These kids are in duress, and uh, most of them, most of the, the that, that's not it. But the scoring system in these schools is very deceitful. I mean, very deceitful. Somebody needs, um, well, they're going to, they're going to have to. I'll just continue to raise the stink. They don't like that either. They are vicious, believe me. And uh, but that's their problem. That's their problem. I'll tell you some Christians. This is exactly how you begin change. You must have a voice in what you believe in. Or what's the use in believing in it? What's the use, right? Which is why I continually say, when you support something, put everything behind it. Put everything behind it. Don't, just like we read last night about love itself, right? When the apostle said, don't just love with, uh, you know, don't let your love be with words, right? And with, 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 with uh, writings and all that. No, let it be in deeds and in truth, right? right? It's called making change. Otherwise, it's only a subject. It's not, no change will come about from a word, or anything else except for deeds, right? Except for truth. Anyway, there we are with that. Somebody said Yellowstone. Well, Yellowstone has been shaky for a long time, hasn't it? It has. Yellowstone is going to continue to shake, and it doesn't matter what anybody says. It's very difficult to depict when Yellowstone is actually going to do something. But I'll say it again. There are worse... There, there are, Bigger monsters to worry about. Much bigger monsters, right? If Yellowstone happens to go, well, who's going to escape that? Because if, if a person is not destroyed uh, by the initial impact and conditions, they certainly will be destroyed by the ash. They certainly will be. But one of the biggest problems that we have is Tamo Masif. And nobody ever talks about that. Have you guys noticed? I, 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 a rule of thumb for me is when people are constantly talking about a specific place, I never waste my time with that place. At no time in history has a place that everybody knew about, looked at, studied, has it ever been an issue. Isn't that odd? Don't you find that odd? It's always the place they never discuss. And normally... 
They never discuss a place they have no control over. Never. Right? So if something were really going to harm you, they will not discuss it. They, they're not going to do it. Right? So if you can understand that, start looking in those areas. They never touch. Right? A lot of people are worried about the New Madrid. A lot of people are worried about uh, Yellowstone. But neither one of them have caused any, any problems in recent times, right? They will eventually. All of them will eventually. But everything else has been going off around them, right? And worse things have been happening. While everybody was worried about Yellowstone, they forgot about the weather and the dryness and the fires. They forgot about that, right? Right now, while everybody's worried about uh, uh, political things, they're forgetting about war. We might want to wake up this time. We might. We might want to see everything in a different light. We might want to pray in a serious way. Because I hope that you guys know, these other countries, having had uh, the leisure they've had in a long time, right? Having been empowered and prospered, do you really think for one moment they're going to give that up? No. So that means they will begin to fight or they will do everything to obstruct what's about to happen. Hope you guys uh, really understand that. The Houthis, they continue to attack and destroy and kill people with lots of weapons. And it's not really, you know, a big deal. The Houthis are responsible since they have been active after the Hamas issue with Israel. Another 40,000 people are gone from them. And they're not going to stop. They're going to spread. Right? They're going to spread. Somebody says this our DEFCON at level 2. Well, here, I know a lot of people report the DEFCON, right? The DEFCON is for intelligence, just so you know that. It is not for, it's not for the reasons you may think. It's not quite like the movies. That's for intelligence, right? And and so when the DEFCON changes, you go to new books, as they say, and you start operating by new standards, a different standard. Um, powers, internal powers change. People in charge change. And nobody else is going to know if the DEFCON ever changes. The only time you will know is through these public announcements when they start going out, right? Unfortunately, at that time, two things will have happened. We will have been involved in a uh, war of which we cannot, you know, decline from. Or uh, citizens have to be prepared to abandon or shelter in place. Right? Shelter in place. If right now we were at DEFCON 2, you guys would not be going out on the streets. You wouldn't be shopping. You wouldn't be watching all your cable channels. You would not have the Internet the way you do. And there's a list of a lot of sites that would no longer be on the Internet that would be non-accessible. So that's the way that goes. Also, communications with cell phones would be minimized. And a sub-network is already in place, which means certain people would not be able to, you wouldn't be able to contact certain entities, right? Uh, it would be totally different than what it is now. Totally different than what it is right now. So you'll know when that changes, because it's going to affect everything we do. Everything we see, everything we hear. And while we still have time, uh, somebody has to take some serious steps for those precautions, right? For example, in COT, for each one of you uh, who have an account in COT, you live in certain states. I get the unique state that you guys are from, so I have one state per group of listings. And your different counties in that state, they're supposed to have emergency plans. One thing everybody ought to be concerned about is their evacuation plan for their uh, specific county or city. And if you don't have that, you're doing yourself a great disservice. You are. 
because the highways are going to be clogged if something happens. Right? You guys remember the California fires? You guys remember the fires in various places over the course of time? Highways were blocked up. People were caught in those fires. They didn't know what to do. In several towns, nobody knew what the evacuation plan was. The police officers, they had the evacuation plan in a book in their cars, but that didn't help anybody. And even they were not completely familiar with it. So it's good that you guys understand and know what that plan is now, right? Also, families are often separated during some these crises. And if you don't have a meeting place and two alternatives, right, pending uh, different conditions, you're doing yourself a great disservice. If self, during an emergency, you can forget your cell phone. You can forget that. Don't rely upon that. You need a location you can meet at where everybody can meet. And if that location is unreachable, you need an alternate location where you guys can meet up so that you can reunite. You have to have that because most people have no idea what they're going to do during an emergency. You certainly don't need to stay home, and a lot of people won't be able to stay home. You may have, you know, two minutes to get out of your house and go and never go back again. And you need to be able to do that effectively and efficiently. Not just to save your own skins, but you guys are helpful to everybody else. Okay? Very helpful. Somebody says shortwave radio. Here's the problem. In the middle of a raging fire, a radio is going to be the last thing you're thinking about. Right? Plus, if you're caught out in the middle of these places, you could be in conditions that are about 11 to 15 to 1800 degrees. I doubt you're going to put anything next to your face. You're going to want an exit. Right? So I'm going to take steps to make... Uh, to, to ensure that people are familiar with the topology of their specific location. I'm going to do that uh, uh, state by state. Actually, that process has already begun. It is arduous. It is. But um, city by city, state by state, I'm going to get that done. The second phase, uh, I'm going to ask some helpers to do that too. And it doesn't hurt if any of you begin that process where you live or somewhere else. The more information we can you know, gather and get to folks, the better off they're going to be, right? That's a maintainable service, right, that, that we'll do. In other words, that's a labor nobody's going to pay you for and something you're going to have to keep up to date. We're going to have to keep it up to date, right, so that everybody can always have their emergency plan through this uh, site. Uh, folks, just briefly, I really don't want this site to be something that does nothing. Okay, so it takes, it, it took a lot of time to set up an infrastructure in the back of the site, not for presentation, but for things just like that, right? So that COT can be plugged into other systems, and you can have uh, not, not just, you know, stuff for information, but some very uh, life-saving tools, things like that, okay? There's a lot of code involved, that's fine. Because once something happens, nobody is going to maintain that site. It must run autonomously, right? And all of us are going to, you know, may have to use it one day. And so it must run from more than one location all by its lonesome. It must survive, right? So it can continue to operate. We can continue to use it. And it won't go down. So don't be surprised when you see in a very short time, an abrupt change in expansion in COT. And what that is, is a, a multitude of tools that have been made, that will be made available on COT for various countries. Okay, so don't be surprised. Don't woo and awe over it. And try not to tell everybody, right? Don't market it. Please don't market it. If We're, we're not going to... Traffic is not going to do us justice when everything is posted because people will look through everything, try and grab everything, test everything, see if it works, see if it's valid for their town, this, that, and the other, straining our system, uh, this, that, and the other. But let people find it just like you did. No need to advertise the little nuances in there, okay? I kind of avoid traffic, right, for the sake of efficiency. I do that on purpose so that uh, everything works for everybody. And we have to do this for multiple countries. Uh, it's a monumental task, but it's a good thing. Plus, you can download the database on a thumb drive 
Isn't that awesome? So there are books in the Bible, lost books, uh, other things that uh, in, the, in the case that something happens, uh, certain people will be designated. Well, just about anybody can download that on a thumb drive. It will be encrypted. I, I do that. I do the encrypted part. So people just can't go and, and take it and put it somewhere else because all that stuff has been hand typed. All of it. Right? For example, I typed the entire Bible in there myself. As I read it, I typed it. No, that's, a, that's what you call crazy, isn't it? But uh, I did that. I did that for two reasons. Number one, when you type something, for some reason, it really embeds itself in your memory, right? And number two, um, it needed to be my personal labor uh, for doing that. So, yeah, I did that in there. Plus, we have other books in there. We have a lot of books in there. Plus, we have uh, very different educational books in there. We're not done with our educational program, right? Things have been offset, because I need uh, things have to be coordinated, right? Very secure, not not random and chaotic, but um, very direct, very direct. Nothing sneaky, straightforward. But we also need personnel to help personnel to do that. So it's going to be a coordinated thing we're going to do in many different areas. And as we get each section up running and operational, we'll move on to the next. That's how we're going to set up the. Um, uh, many of the admins in this organization. And again, everything is voluntary. Nothing, there's no obligation to anybody, right? Uh, no obligation. So um, we want to keep it that way. So, it, so it's a labor of love, right? That's what we want. So it's a labor of love. And we'll do it for as long as we can. As long as we can, right? Right now, our main product, just again, are chat rooms. We have chat rooms all over the place, all over the world. So that is a blessing that they're working, operational, efficient, and um, but that's a good thing because communication has gone down in certain places, but they were still able to chat with one another. They were. Even among you, there are people that are designated as hosts for the chat. So their device, one device, one iPhone, one you know Galaxy phone, whatever the case is, can operate as a server for about 100 people in the chat. So it can be a mobile network also, right? If the mobile devices go down or something like that, it is, uh, you know, at its core, a radio network. So it can work by radio. Yeah. So I'm going to do that while my brain is, is not, uh, you know, fractured too much. Get all that in order. So somebody else can carry on and you guys will actually have something, a workable tool that is um, that will provide a little bit of safety, right? A little bit of uh, a little bit of communication during a time that you may need it. Most importantly, I'll be able to communicate things during the global change. And you are inside of a global change. For example, this year you guys are gonna notice the media is changing again. They're going to target subjects. The world's going to be educated in certain subjects. Think of it as uh, programming for the world. Yet again, you have to be introduced to things you never thought you'd be introduced to. You have to be. And you that has to start this year. You must be introduced into concepts and ideas you never thought possible. You must things that people never thought existed. You must be introduced. And they are going to do this this year. It begins this year. They're out of time. It has to begin. So uh, the world's going to be a bit uh, weird, especially the older you are, because you're not, you're not going to change like everybody else. You're not very adaptive concerning some of this new stuff, right? New ideas. This UFO topic, that was on purpose. It was. But at its core, they're talking about paranormal things. At its core, that's what you have to be introduced to. I hope that you're rooted and grounded in the Word of God, and I hope that your validation is not some person who speaks from the DOD or some person who speaks from the White House, right? That will say something, and then you think it's true. I hope that your validation is, is, is rooted in the truth of our Lord, 
She already told us what these things were. But you must be introduced this year. So all programming, movies and otherwise, all media is going to change to start this process. All of it. All right? So get ready. I said this before, before all these paranormal shows came out. Remember that? And I know some people thought I was nuts, but I've seen the books. I've seen the plans. And you're about to be educated again. You must be introduced. You must be. All right? There will be new discoveries this year. There will be new accomplishments talked about this year. So get ready. Because while the world breaks down, while the weather continues to get worse, many people are going to be thrust into this esoteric world. They will be highly educated by the world in these things because they must be introduced. You're about to take it, well, as we go forward, you're going to live back in the ancient days again. And they, the media, movies, television, right? That's them, not us. Them, the world is going to do this. Every channel you turn on, right? You're going to notice uh, they have a theme that is different from what it was. You're going to notice. You're going to see it. So uh, once you identify that, you'll know what they're doing. You'll know. No one should have ever thought that the beast would rise by itself. No, it's going to have citizens, guards and representatives, all sorts of things. And the spiritual darkness is going to become quite thick, very thick. Don't worry about that, though. Right? You're, you're put here on this earth that nothing out there can penetrate. And some of you have a difficult time right now because you, you operate in a duality. But it's okay because this is a process where we learn how to break free from that darkness and walk into the light. If you're not there yet, well, you're not there yet. That's what these talks are for. That's why we get together and discuss things so that you can break free so that you can be free in Christ, right? That's what these are for. All right, guys, I'm going to take a break for a few minutes. Make sure everything is up and running. When we come back, I'm going to take your questions, okay? So save them. I'll be right back. And if I don't get your uh, question, right, Don't please don't feel bad. I'm not ignoring you. I kind of do that randomly. I try to get as many as I can. And, um, yeah, don't feel bad about that. Just repost them. Okay, that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT. Okay, I don't know what happened there. I don't know. That was reverse. I am a reverse, non-hireable DJ. How about that? I am. Actually, I'm blind on part of this. I, I still can't see uh, part of these controls. I'm doing this remotely, right? So I'm connecting. <laughs> I'm connecting to equipment. And I'm relying on feedback, which evidently is not coming through on this one. So keep me posted, please. Keep me posted. Okay, somebody says, Mike, there seems to be the same uh, something size of the moon's photo take from the moon's surface. Should it appear much larger? Mike, Earth seems to be the same size. Wait a minute. Let me go back. That's a good one. Earth seems to be the same size as the moon in photos taken from the moon's surface. Should it be appear much larger? No, it shouldn't. No, it should not. If, if you look at the moon from the Earth, it is a specific size, right? If you look at the Earth from the moon, it will always be a specific size. The distance, the camera, right, those, 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 um, those radii, that, that radius... Right? Some of the pictures that you're seeing have been cropped. Some of the pictures that you see have been set in the center. And then, you know, stuff has been added around them. A black, a black mat has been added around them. Some have been filtered. But the sizes are real. The problem is scale, not the sizes. So what you have to do is look at the moon's surface. On a, on a valid picture, by the way, if you see a valid picture of, of the moon. Are you serious? Wait a minute. Guys, I'm doing everything backward. You guys keep me posted. I'm blind. It'll only last for about, well, still trying to connect. 
It'll only last for about, I give it about five minutes. Because I touched the button I was not supposed to. So let's do this again. Somebody says, good question, though. Good question. Let me uh, repeat this. Somebody says, should the Earth, when looking at the Earth from the moon, should it be larger, right, compared to looking at the moon from the Earth? That's what, that's what they said. Should it be larger? My, my answer is this. It is larger. But the problem is scale. Scale. When people take these, NASA, for example, now you might not believe in the moon missions, but um, in NASA, they used to have an entire department devoted to the processing of images. Okay? It was highly secured. Highly secured. When they used to process those pictures, they would always mess with the scale. Because they didn't want people to, to see things in the skies. For example, wouldn't it be upsetting to you guys if you saw a Russian-made, uh, you know, thingamajiggy up on the moon? They don't want people to see that. They didn't want people to see the towers. They didn't want people to see the pyramids. They didn't want people to see what was on the ground underneath the dust. Right? So just give us some time. The moon will uncover itself. Right? The earth is... It goes perfectly around the earth. The same side points to us all the time. That is impossible. Nothing in the heavens is ever going to function like that. Nothing. It's been hit by things. It, it, it recorrected itself. And this was, this was even a, um, uh, an observed observation from people who had almost no security in NASA and JPL. They saw it too, right? They take measurements. They have lasers on the moon that point to the Earth and lasers on the Earth that point to the moon. They can see the micro-adjustments it makes ever so often. It has never been out of sync with the Earth. Never, 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 never. That's in, I'm telling you, that's impossible. It has recovered from the double wobbles of the Earth. It stays synchronized with the Earth in such a way that if our axis tilts a little, so does the moon. It's almost like a perfect gyroscopic system. It is an unnatural. It is absolutely unnatural, which means it was put there, and that dust is covering up something, which is why everybody is rushing back there, right? Because, let's say, the threat looks like it's gone. But it also has weld marks around the rim of it that match the moons, well, in other planets. So things are not quite as they've been presented, but just give it time. Every soul on earth is going to know the truth of the moon soon enough. It will unmask itself. It will unmask itself. And when it does, well, then you know. You'll know. Everybody will know. Here's the problem, though. We believe everything we were taught by those we say we don't trust. Don't we? Let's go ahead and face it. The very people we say we don't trust, we trust. The very individuals, the individuals who say, oh, they're involved in dark things. We have their knowledge, and we teach everybody else about their knowledge. And if somebody speaks outside of their knowledge, we say, oh, they're lying. They're making that story up, right? We have somewhat lost our minds. We do things like NASA, right? People say, well, I remember a long time ago, people said openly, that I don't trust NASA. As soon as something appeared in the heavens, let's go to the NASA website and see what that is. And then they would read the name of it, see how far it is. Now, see, NASA's lying because yesterday or, or last month it said it was this, and this month it says it's this. And I'm sitting there listening like, what are they using? The information from the same organization, comparing their information, and that's how they're lying. Because their own information contradicts. If you can't trust the first figure... Or the second figure, right? Well, why would anybody be involved in that? So here's a fact. We have taken all the information from the world that's been given to us by the people we say we don't trust. We trust the information they have given to us or that we have observed through clever, you know, trickery on the Internet. We think those are real figures. We use that information to prove that they're not telling the truth. Are you kidding me? See how the Lord, the Lord has to come back. This is, that's, chaos, that's insanity. That's insanity. 
right? I don't trust the agendas of places. I don't. I certainly don't trust all the internet information by these places. I don't. Because they're never going to tell people what they need to hear. And if you go back in history at the small things, you'll find it. They didn't tell you about things they knew about. Because they can't. They can't start a global panic. And so what I'm telling you is this. You're not going to find what you're looking for through these people. You're going to have to go and seek your father. Ask your father. But when you ask your father, make sure that you remember you're approaching the king of kings and lord of lords, the creator of all things. Don't go to him and ask him, is a crayon really red or am I missing something? No, don't do that. Be, be highly purposed that when you get that answer, you may help somebody with it. Remember, we are here to, to uh, help, right, to assist, right, to spread the gospel. Make sure that your life is about that. Please. Somebody says, will the binary system tear up the moon? The moon can do what it wants to. What if the moon moves? What if it moves? What if it adjusts itself? What about the stories in Egypt and the stories in Sumeria and the other stories that said the moon adjusted itself? What about Jupiter? What about Saturn when they said it looked like you could touch the rings of Saturn here from Earth? Now, you know everything was out of whack back then, right? Totally out of whack. So the planets and the positions they're in, they weren't in that position a long time ago. Somebody said, who moves it? Nobody has to move it. Nobody. We'll just do it. Why does somebody have to move it? It'll do it itself. We uh, Listen, we don't, it's just like, there, there's a scripture in a few books that indicate we mistake the nature of God's creation. Like a star, right? We have mistakenly interpreted the stars. I believe that. I do believe that. I believe that. A cell inside your body is alive, right? If you were inside the body... How many things would you say were just not alive, they're just there? You wouldn't know about the purpose of the cell, how it intelligently carries blood, how it can communicate with other cells, how they obey the will of the whole, your cells do. And when they don't obey, when they become a rebellious cell, they're cancerous. You didn't know that a cell, if it has a defect, it will not sustain itself. It'll die. It will not nourish itself. It'll die. That's something. That is something. Anyway, somebody says, will we be introduced to any live cryptids this year? Uh, you'll certainly be introduced into the foundation of cryptids and some more things. Right? You're also going to learn about Esau. You're going to have to learn about Esau. You're going to have to learn about the tribes in the earth that nobody ever talked about. Lots of military personnel are going to come forward. They're going to tell every, the whole world. They're going to tell the whole world. They're going to say, listen, our commanders, uh, our bosses on certain missions told us not to engage any of those hairy things out there. And they are out there. They're in all lands, every lands. But military personnel are going to tell you how they were told not to engage. Special operations are going to tell you how they were told never to engage or they will kill everybody out there. That weapons will not hurt them. You can't shoot them and they die. Right? You can't do that. Anyway. They're going to tell you about that. And they do respond to aggression. In the presence of aggression, they will become. They, they'll do away with the aggression. They do nothing around peaceful people. They don't. You can learn that too. If you're at peace and have peaceful intentions, they do nothing. Only when you have aggression. But these are not, you know, big monkeys you're dealing with. No. You can learn about Esau and Esau's heritage. And the, the stories about Esau and theories about Esau and all sorts of stuff about Esau. And how they spread around the world. That's what you'll learn about. 
Then we figure it's like a red haired person. How many people here are have red hair, natural red hair? Don't you know about yourselves? Do you know about yourselves? Anybody here who has red hair, do you know about yourselves? I'm going to show you something. We're not talking about you're not some alien or something like that, no. But do you know about yourselves? Do you? Because if you don't, a person who has red hair, right, they have the most robust immune systems on planet Earth, only in comparison to one other type, human being. They also have regenerative, they, they can regenerate much faster than anybody else. They also have uncommon strength and a higher bone density. They also have replicatable bone. Uh, you know when you work out and do all that kind of stuff, right? You tear your muscles, your muscles grow back, their muscles grow back twice as fast. They do. They can also push themselves to do things that would even shock them, like hold their breath twice as long as everybody else. In fact, they are very different. But see, the problem is, that is lost knowledge as to why. African Americans, right? African Americans, are, they, they also have these distinctive capabilities. Very distinctive. And if they push themselves, then they become what they truly are. Not one of us was made to be lazy, right? Real pale Caucasians have a very distinct capability. And if they push themselves, they'll find it. Those who are called Asian, right, and Middle Eastern people, if they push themselves, they'll find it. In every single case, when you push yourself, genes come forward. The devil didn't put those genes there. It did not come from the Nephilim. God knew exactly what he was doing. But people are, they're not made to sit down all day and be lazy. We're not made to just sit around and eat and do all this, that, and the other. We're not made to do that. We have very unique characteristics and capabilities. Imagine if you had a team of African Americans, redheads, and pale Caucasians, and the other Caucasians, which have very distinct physical uh, characteristics. If you, and Asians, if you put all those people together with the, with the, the red and the yellows and the whites and the blacks and the browns, right? Put all them together. There's nothing they cannot accomplish. The problem is that's lost knowledge. Doctors know about that. They encounter that often, right? And they don't want anybody to push past their own personal limits because they'll step right into these, into another world, essentially. They'll become incredibly different. Your system breaks down when you do not push it. Your system is made to push not to relax. And what does the world have you doing? Relaxing. Relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. Somebody says, what about us uh, blue-eyed bonds? Everybody has special characteristics. Did you know that true blue-eyed people are quite logical? And they can also, they, they, they're also highly empathetic. They are very empathetic. Which is why they suffer inside most of their lives. Did you know that? And nobody can figure them out. They suffer inside almost on a continuous basis. They, in fact, they purposely stay away from certain things because they know it's not. It's almost like they know it's not for them, right? They always blame themselves too. They do. It's like a self-pity thing they can't get rid of, and they don't understand where that comes from. None of us were meant to work on our own either. God put us here together, not individually. It is man who has taught you to live by yourselves, right? The separation in the Old Testament was from man from the leftover Nephilim, not race to race. People manipulate knowledge to cause further chaos. And again, why do we trust the information of the very organizations we don't trust? Why? Why? How many of you trust Intel? How many, how many of you trust the company Intel? Guess what? I don't have to trust them. Their computers work. That does not make them trustworthy. 
In order for me to trust someone, I have to know what agenda they have. Now, they can make something all day and I can use it and enjoy it. I do not have to trust them because I don't know their agenda, right? Once you know their agenda, that normally determines if you trust them or not. Don't be fooled because they make good toys. You can use the toys good, right? But when it comes to Intel itself, the entity of Intel, right? Do you know what their agenda is? Most people are fooled because they say, well, they make good computers, so they must be trustworthy. No, one thing has nothing to do with the other. Nothing. Someone says, Brother Mike, I have O negative blood. So is there anything to that? Well, you have O negative blood. O negative. Blood types do very specific things, even the orange factor. I don't agree with everybody concerning orange blood types. I'm sorry, I don't. There is a blood type that's common. That is the strangest blood type on the earth. But again, you have to wake it up. Blood by itself does nothing. It's what blood gives life to and what that life does. That can cause the blood to truly flourish, to do what it's supposed to do. Right? If, if people were to educate themselves, stop believing the, 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 the programming, right? the messaging behind the information, they would really, you, you guys really pick up some things that, that's there. Everything is there right, right in front of you. It's right in front of you. All the charts, everything, you have the capability to get to it because you have a computer and the internet. You do. You do. Anyway. All right, outside of blood types and everything else. Outside of that. Somebody says Intel is Israeli owned. No, Israel does not own Intel. Nope, they don't. Sorry about that story. I think that a lot of people have, they have turned their hatred into stories specifically for the Jews, saying that the Jews own this and own that and own that. And so people can get angry at them. All that does is stir up anger. If a subject stirs up anger, it's probably false. It's more likely it's false. I, I Listen, I told you guys, I had to unlearn so many things, and, and my bubble was busted. But I really did learn what was behind the door, right? You, you just find out too many things are lies. Propaganda. That's how they steer people. You guys are being steered into doing exactly what they want. You are. You're being steered. People control you perfectly. That's the truth. How do they do that? Because you trust what they say. And people continue to do that. They have people out there that are spokesmen for what they say. Right? It, it'd be something if we trusted Christ. Right? Not in the way that people interpret Christ. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Trusting the Lord the way he has introduced himself to you. That's your truth. And all of us need to operate by the truth. All of us need to know Christ for ourselves. We do. I don't want to know Christ through any of you. I want to know him directly. Right? If he is a deliverer, then I want to know that. I want to know how that works. Right? If he is my Messiah, I want to know that directly. I don't want to know that through any of you. In other words, right, I do not want my relationship with Christ to be based on your stories. No, I don't want that. I want to know him personally, directly. I want to be an experiencer of every aspect of the Messiah. All of us are meant to do that. You remember all the, all the descriptions of the living God in the Old Testament? Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, all those different names. Those are characteristics of God. It's not his name. Those are characteristics. Healer, deliverer, provider, all these different things. Listen, you are to know the Father as your provider. You're to know the Father as your healer. You're to know the Father as your banner. You're to know the Father as your Savior. You're to know the Father as these things, and you're given a life so that you may know them, each one of them. Think about that. And when you know him by these characteristics, no one, 
No one can make you stray again. A lot of you have missing. You, you don't know why you keep going back into this sinful thing. That's why. Because it's meant for you to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Most High. Not know him by what somebody else called him, but to know him yourself. If I call God my healer, that doesn't mean you can call him that. If you don't know him as a healer, how can you call him that? You're just repeating what I said. You need him as your healer. And then you'll know him as a healer. Hmm? That's what your life is for. Why do you think you go through so many things? None of you would know any of those characteristics of the Father unless your life went down the tubes over and over again. Come on now, somebody. Your troubles are purposed. You're not just some average person in the earth. You were marked with the hand of God when you were sent here to this earth. That's why you believe. And you have to go through things so that you may know him. Because once you know him, your faith does not waver. Do you know that? Somebody asked me the other day, they said, well, you got to talk more on this subject to make sure that these people know that. And I know I don't. No, I do not. I speak to those who desire to hear. In the Bible it says, let those who have ears hear what the Spirit is saying. So what about those who don't have ears? You cannot make them hear. You can't. Can't do it. Just like all of us, we couldn't hear anything of the living God a long, 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 long time ago. We could not. Could we? No. But when we hit that life's uh, road sign, that stop sign that smashed us in the face, we stopped and said, ouch. And when nobody was coming to pick us up, we said, oh, I need help. And nobody came. We said, Lord, help me. That's how it begins. Hmm? That's how it begins. You guys know what I'm talking about. You hit that big brick wall in life. And nobody came to help you. And you went straight to the Lord. That was the beginning of your true relationship. So I got to know the Lord now. I got to know him, Lord. You're my last chance. We came to him because he was our last chance. Isn't it awesome? That he already knew we would do that yeah you've been marked don't ever think your problems and troubles and turmoil in life is useless no 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 it is useful and you're growing it does not matter what your age is let no one talk about your age if you're 168 years old and you just came to the lord by accident then celebrate and tell everybody my process has begun. I'm getting to know my father. I just say that. Somebody says, Mike, many spouses is not saved yet. Call the other names and mocks God, his word, and calls me Satan, demons, correct? That is not God. I love my father in heaven, and he lives with me, Jesus Christ. Well, let me, let me get this question right. Let me stop your scroll here real quick. Don't go away. I'll go back. Wait a minute. Let me go back. That's one of those touch ones. Point. Okay, somebody says, Mike, spouses that are not saved yet, call the other names and mocks God, his word, and then calls me Satan, demons. Demons, correct? That is not God. Yeah, and also demons can cause a person to feel frustrated. Uh oh, this is what you guys don't want to hear because you would rather it be biology, right? This is not biology or chemistry. Hate to tell you that. Anyway, when a person is sitting and all of a sudden they get just frustrated, irritated. Those are negative spirits. It's also a telltale sign they found a home in someone. People excuse them as, well, I'm just, you know, not in a good mood right now. No, you're not. You're, you're running over with something you shouldn't. They are in opposition to the Most High. That person whose spouse is doing this, do you not know you're their covering? I want you to look at your situation this way. If that person is not physically abusing you, right, but they are doing things that are just uncouth because of your belief, that's called a fight. Now, how do you fight a demon, everybody? How do you fight a demon and win? Because, listen to me, I'm not talking about those people you start yelling and everything else, and then a day later they're cursing, and they get mad at their families and beat them up. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about a person who would have a confrontation with, a, with the most vicious person in the world, 
And they walk away intact with the Holy Ghost, celebrating, thankful for the servitude, thankful for that opportunity. They walk away with joy and with peace, and they stay that way, and it's never altered. Hmm? I'm talking about those people who confront demonic entities, who carry no residue, right? Because a lot of people carry residue, and they don't even know it through their own pride. See, if you, if you are in proximity to one of those things, and they can make you say a prideful statement, they're trying to legally make you falter so they can get to you. And in a lot of cases, they do. They get to you, right? So I'm not talking about those folks. If you don't know a person who has successfully engaged one of those things and walked away with all the joy of the Lord, right? If you don't know anybody like that, you've not really seen the real fight. The fight I'm talking about is not yelling. The fight I'm talking about, right, is not quoting Scripture over and over again to the thing. The thing knows Scripture better than you do. No. To fight the good fight is when that person cuts up, you love them even the more. For example, say that person is sitting there and they're blaming everything on you. Nothing is stopping you from praying and listening to that person at the same time. If a person could love that person, say, you know, I love that person, not opening their mouth. And they begin not open their mouth and pray. You're, you're going to mess up that demonic entity. It may even speak to you. And say that you're more, you're much more powerful than I thought you were. That can happen. When you hold your peace and when you do everything in love, do everything in love, you do not fight a demon with darkness. You do not fight a demon with attitude and all this stuff that human beings come up with. That is for sure. That's for sure. God never approached a demonic entity and started yelling. In fact, he approached and they began to run. Jesus walked in peace and in love. And if you do the same, they're going to run from you too. That is a mark of someone who is in Christ. Jesus said they're going to know you by how you love one another. Correct? Not, not how you dress. Right? Not what you call each other. But how you love one another. So what is the key word there? Love. You get in the presence of darkness. You love that person to pieces. Do you know what happens? When you love someone to pieces who is in front of you, cursing you out, doing everything else, stop listening to the negative speech coming out of their mouths. Forgive them and love them and ask they be delivered. You don't even have to open your mouth and I'm telling you, it'll be like dumping lava on that demonic entity. That's how you do that. You don't fight darkness, right, in, in this natural form of flesh, with flesh. And with darkness, you don't do that because they'll turn and tear you to pieces. You stay yourselves positioned in Christ. Stay positioned within salvation. Keep yourselves within salvation. And within salvation is love because you're saved by love. Nobody owed you that. You're saved by love itself. So keep yourselves positioned in love and have an understanding. This person is being influenced by darkness. That's how you fight. And you fight every day. Every single day of your life. You fight for the sake of love. You know, the Lord said, be at peace as much as you're able with everyone. He did. The Lord emphasized love. He even told us that God is love. How many more hints do we need? That is a good fight of faith. That is the real fight of faith. It's when you stand in love itself, when you refuse to hate that person based on what they said. I'm not going to hate somebody based on what some demonic entity influenced the person to say. Everybody else can say, well, that person knew what they were doing. They can say that all day. I know what the fight is. I am by no means inexperienced with the fight. And I have seen people change at the drop of a dime. And there are certain things people cannot do in your proximity anymore. Do you know that? Once you stand in love, they can't do certain things in your proximity anymore. They can't. So take note. They know you very well. They know what they have to do to get you out of love itself and out of salvation. 
How does a person step out of salvation? Anybody know? You know, when the Bible says, stand within Christ, how do you stand outside of Christ? When do you do that? Anybody know? Anybody know? I'll give you a hint. It's when you do things based on what you think. When you do things as instructed or demonstrated by the Messiah, you're good. Why? Because if you believe the Messiah, you're going to do exactly what the Messiah did. If you don't believe the Messiah, you're going to do something else, pure and simple. You see how that works? You, you all see how it works? When you believe the Messiah... You will adopt his ways. When you don't believe the Messiah, you're going to employ your ways. See how that works? That's how that works. Okay, let me get my mouse working right here. All right, questions again. Let me see. You guys repost. I, I just missed the whole thing. Everything you guys said, I just totally missed it. Absolutely, 100% missed it. Okay, somebody says, Mike, how can the death of my two sons be part of my process? I have enough through, I have, let me see, I can help you in that. Oh, let me go back. Somebody says, oh, how can the death of my two sons be part of my process? I have been through much that I do see as a process, but this I don't. Well, I lost a daughter when she was very young. Do you know that? Gone. She was very young. Gone. Now, as I told you guys before, I truly do believe in the Lord, right? That little lady was my life. Can you imagine that? Imagine that. Gone. Gone. No more conversations. No more raising him. No more doing anything. Gone. I was the one that spent the last minutes with her gone. And I'm, listen, I would never have God's process altered. One of the first things the Lord showed me and trained me and raised me up for was to see the truth. There's no way I could continue in anything the Lord assigned me to do if I couldn't believe in the simple process of transition. First thing he let me know was my little girl was his little girl. And she was my responsibility while she was here. She did not belong to me. She belonged to the living God. When she passed, she did not die. She transitioned. She was a child. She transitioned. She didn't die. Then as concerning sadness, deeply, I missed her. It kind of messed me up for a while until the Lord just touched me again. You know what he said? How can you be upset when someone is with me? They have fulfilled their purpose. So the Lord taught me to trust his process and stop trying to employ my process. So I learned about plenty of mistakes. Then later on in life, I saw a lot of death, and it did not move me. And because it did not move me, it helped save others. It did. Led them right to Christ. Because people used to ask me, how can you be so strong with all these losses? I said, because there are no losses. We're just unable to see the victories. That's why I'm no good at funerals. I'm not going to lie. When somebody in Christ passes, I celebrate inside. I start smiling. I am incredibly joyful for that person. That's not a joke. And the Lord has his special way of allowing gifts to manifest to seal his truth. So I'm not blind to God's process. In my personal life, I've lost hundreds of people. Not strangers, very close people. Close. When I was young, I lost about a hundred and so men. In about two minutes, they were gone. I was not. Can you imagine how that felt? You think you'd blame yourself for that? Of course you would, right? If the Lord had not showed me and demonstrated and brought me through those things, everything would have been lost with me. 
The only reason I persist and can persist is by him. And now it's through him. It certainly is not by me. It's by him. When the Lord introduces us to truth, sometimes we don't like it. Now for the biggest thing. Do you know how many children I have assisted since then? Tons. Do you know why? Because through the death of one, I can see how precious and rare all the rest are. And because of that, I can identify things that a lot of people would look over. And because of that, I have stepped forward where everybody else would say it's none of my business. The Lord used me as an instrument in many different areas. Many different areas. Let the Lord's process be the Lord's process. Don't blame him. Be thankful that your children, right, those children that he gave you a responsibility over are with him. But take note of something. There are lots of other children in this world. And the people that were given the opportunity to look over them do not desire to look over them. And I can almost take a big guess that you can see them. You can see them with their parents and discern something that nobody else can. You may have some innate ability to discern a situation before anybody tells you concerning a child. But if you're hurt inside, you'll ignore it. You won't trust it. You won't act on it. Let the Lord's way be done in your life. You don't lose anybody in this earth. People transition, you can't see them. That's all. You don't lose them. You don't. You really don't. So now you're at that crossroads. You can trust the Lord's word. Or you can trust what the world has given you. Hmm? Somebody says, I'm, I'm not sure they were right with God. They were in their 20s. It's okay. It's all right. They've finished their process. You've got to finish yours. And there's still lots of other people out there that have not transitioned. Right? I had a couple peers in my life like that. Right? I suspect they did not make it. But I, I'm going to tell you something. I've seen the Lord do some miraculous things. I really have. I've seen an older guy at the end of his life accept the Lord, and his face changed before everybody. He saw something none of us could see. His physical face changed. I mean, it changed. So I'm not one to tell you that a person just is totally condemned because we do not know what encounter they're having. Even at the last seconds of their life, we don't know. We don't know, but the Lord does. And the Lord is not in the business of condemning people, but doing everything to save people. That's the truth. Hmm. Somebody says, Mike, what physical mechanisms did God use to stop the sun from moving in Joshua? I, well, I don't believe the sun stopped. I believe everything else did. If the sun appears to stop, then it 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 it, uh, it probably now. This is I'm not saying this definitively. I'm just saying would it be more um, um, uh, more of a fit if the Earth started to alter, right? Would it be more of a fit? For example, there are a lot of people convinced at the beginning of the Bible that East and West were different than they are now. That east was west, and west was east. Hmm? So, somebody says, pole shift. No, not pole shift. The poles remain the same. See, there have been some strange happenings on this earth. For example, imagine the earth rotates in the opposite direction, but the poles remain the same. Imagine that. Kind of like a reverse polarity. Listen to me, though. Can you hear me on this? 
This is the danger that I'm tracking even now. Polarity is everything for the conditions of this earth and, the, and our minds and everything else. Our magnetic field is fluctuating in a very predefined way, which means its polarity is about to change. Hear me on this. If the polarity changes in the magnetosphere, it will not absorb the solar winds. If the Carrington event, if a, if a solar flare, an X9, hit us, but the Earth's magnetosphere is polarized the right way, it's not going to hurt us. The Earth can absorb all of that. It'll hit the bow shock and be absorbed on the outer skirts of the magnetic field, sucked in by the tail with a lag, right? And it will dissipate much of that, you know, energy on the opposite side if we're polarized the right way. If we're not polarized the right way, the Earth can let off a little tiny peep of a CME and kapoof, all our lights are going out. Whether we're affected or not by the sun is based on the magnetic shielding of the Earth. It is polarized. If it's ever polarized in the wrong way, the solar winds are going to begin to burn us. And do you know what's happening right now? It's doing exactly what other items would do right before a type of reversal. It's fluctuating badly. We're going to have vulnerabilities coming up. That's just not good. A lot of people know what that leads to. They know what it leads to. So, don't you guys understand that? Because if we, if our magnetic shielding is polarized in the opposite direction, the solar winds can destroy us. We don't need a flare. We don't need that. The solar winds are enough to knock all electricity out on the face of the earth and start to burn the surface. Just so you understand that. You see how delicate things are? Things are very delicate. Very delicate. But things are not guaranteed to be sustained. They are not. And all too often, we take life for granted. We're not promised tomorrow. Nobody is promised tomorrow. And it's a shame we don't believe that. Any one of us could go at any minute. I could go in a few minutes. Other people can go in a few minutes and then what? Well, that's just our time. Somebody said there's one speaking about the jet stream slowing. The jet stream is going to reverse. And the temperate forest regions are going to be arid regions and vice versa. Dust will be all over the place. Crops will perish. They're going to have to grow crops in other places. We are going through these changes. And but guess what? Who is preparing for it? For real. People want dates and validation, and I'm telling you right now, when they get the validation, they still won't act on it. They're going to need more validation. You guys have to be prepared. Be prepared so that when it happens and the world's in a panic, you already knew, and you know what to do. Right? It's just like winter. If nobody believed in winter, but it was coming anyway. Right? But you knew about it. Wouldn't you go out and get some heavy coats and some boots and this, that, and the other to make sure that you can handle the winter? Wouldn't you start stockpiling, you know, foods that you need for yourselves and everybody else? So what if they don't believe? You prepare for the ones that don't believe. Do what is right in your life with the living God, and he will use you as a vessel of salvation for somebody else, and you will eventually bring Christ glory 
Christ will be glorified in your works. But you have to operate within those truthful convictions that you have, not wait for everybody else to catch on. Right? Me, I, I know people don't believe some of the things that I'm preparing for. I don't need them to believe. I don't. I just need to be diligent in my preparations so that when the time comes, every, in fact, everybody can call me the biggest liar in the book concerning anything that would ever happen. It's not going to stop me from being prepared for both myself and them. Right? It's not going to stop me. I probably will not live to see certain things like most people. I probably won't. But I will have lots of preparations for the people who did not believe as well as for those who did. I'm not waiting on somebody to believe to do something. I know with the Lord, I have to act on those things I believe are true. And those things I believe are true are those things that the Lord has shown me and many things I will not share because it will be a waste of time. I'll never leave a desert behind me. Never. I'll always prepare. Always prepare. So that when I'm gone, somebody else will benefit from every step I took. Somebody says, Mike, is a water vent coming soon? You better believe it. Well, you don't have to believe it. It's coming. It is coming. It's coming. And when it does come, all these areas that are flooding, right? You, got, you guys are going to have a good example of what areas are prone to flooding. You have to pay attention to these storms. These storms are purposed highly. Right? Do I believe Israel will be attacked on Passover? I cannot, I can't comment on that. I know that Israel at some point is going to be totally overrun. I know that something is rising in the earth that is incredibly difficult for people to see. What would you guys do if you were invited to prayer and you thought it was legit? And when you walked into the room, you saw something you never thought you'd ever see. And it was so distasteful spiritually that it caused you to regurgitate. And you had never regurgitated before. And then if you saw clearly what they were paying respects and homage to, you wanted nothing to do with any of it ever again, but you were stuck. What would you do? Would you go tell everybody? Because I'll tell you now, nobody would believe. Nobody would believe. The only thing you would be able to do is to dig deep down in your faith and really begin to encourage everybody to have an honest and rooted relationship with Christ. Because you would know that if they do not, they will eventually be tormented while they're alive. That's where torment begins, when people are alive. And death will flee from them. People are making a great mistake in their translation of things of the ancient world. They're trying to say that everything was some technological thing. I'm telling you now. There are forces that technology has nothing to do with it. Will and desire are fueling them. And they're not machines. It's simple will and desire. To impose one's desire upon another is witchcraft, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, back to questions. Somebody says, so I can't comment on that. Okay, I can't comment on that. But, you know, if, if I had a concern about something, I would certainly certainly make sure that everything was right in my soul prior to that time. And I know this, there is a call on all of us to make sure our souls are rooted in Christ. It is a deep concern to a lot of people right now. Somebody says, Mike, I love the word when I talk about the word. 
with others. They don't understand and find things in scriptures others don't see. If you, let me share this with you. If I were to talk about the word in a way that you guys wouldn't understand, I'd be doing nothing for you, right? Right? So hear me on this. When you see beyond the other person, don't talk to them on those points that are beyond them. Compliment them. People will always ask you. They'll always ask you questions. So answer those questions in a way that they can understand. In the Bible it says, if we, talk, if we cannot talk to a person in a simple way where they can understand it, we're doing nothing. We're not doing a thing. Right? So it's, if you see something beyond the other person and that they can't capture or understand, it's not for them. It's not for them. Always simplify your language and themes and concepts and everything else for the other person. God gives us knowledge, right? He gives us knowledge, and then he sends us out for people, not to compete with them, not to jerk them off the ground either, but to complement the truth they desire to see. Every single person out there, they want to know something of the Lord. Not all things. They want to know something. It's important. It's important that we complement what they want to know of the Lord in truth. You don't really have to volunteer everything either. A person will ask you things in that area they have not yet fully grasped. See, in the Bible it says, little by little, right? Here a little, there a little. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Not all at one time. Sometimes we get excited because we understand a larger concept. But if we communicate that, communicate that to somebody else who does not understand, I, I used to see people, when a person didn't understand, they said, well, you'll never learn. I wish these people would learn. That's not spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ is spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Right? So you can know a lot of concepts and a lot of things that somebody else doesn't know. Always communicate to them what they're able to hear so you can help them where they are. When you know something about the other person, right, you're going to have a lot of little ones to help out too. Learn to communicate with those little ones. Learn to do that, right? And try and break the, the habit of debate at all costs. Debate is a trait that the Messiah spoke against. The world likes debate. The world, the world, they're the ones who emphasize debates. Jesus said, don't do it. It is a trait of a reprobate mind. Don't do it. Purge yourselves of debate. Learn to work with people on their level. So you can be effective everywhere you go. And always, always act when the Lord sends you. He will send you. Somebody says, explain the difference between a debate and a discussion. Well, those two definitions are given to you by who? Mankind. So I implore everybody to go into the Bible and see what the Father calls both of them. Because he does go over both. He does. In the world, a debate is when you're trying to prove one thing over somebody else's thing. That's useless and foolish. A conversation or a discussion in the Bible is when you come together and reason together. That's a conversation. If I were to talk to somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ, how could we disagree if we're operating by the same spirit? There is no disagreement when you operate by the Spirit, there is only a disagreement when you operate by flesh. We are not to operate by flesh, nor discuss the Bible in flesh. We're supposed to be born-again Christians operating by the Holy Ghost that come from the one and true God, not the six and ninety gods, right? The Holy Spirit does not disagree with itself. We really have to work on our concepts with the world versus the Father. That is a big problem. 
because we can't see it right away. See, I pointed out because we don't, we can't see that right away. We utilize the tool set we've been given from the world to try and walk as a Christian with the Lord. It does not work. It doesn't work. The world says debate is okay. The world defined a conversation full of disagreements, and that's part of the conversation. That is not what the Lord defined. And it's not what he gave us, right? That's not how. That is not how he instructed us to be or to even look at things. No. Debate is clearly from a flesh point of view. We're to operate by the spirit, not the flesh. Somebody says, three days of darkness. Is that, this, is that, the, is that the authentic signs in the heavens or copycat? Which one is it? Is that the authentic one? Hopefully so. That's funny. I've been looking for that signs in the heavens. Hopefully it's the authentic one. Anyway, three days of darkness. You guys know where that came from, don't you? You know the root of three days of darkness, everybody? How many of you guys know what, the, what word that came from? Three days of darkness. Anybody? There's a story, there's a story, oh, just got a mercy alert on TV that flooding and landslides are impacting much of California. I wish people would leave that place. Lord, forgive me, I shouldn't even say that. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Somebody says Catholic prophecy. Well, the Catholics, back in the day, right, um, it was a Catholic that had that prophecy of the three days of darkness with instruction, telling everybody to make sure no light enters into the windows and set the other. But three days of darkness also took place, a lot of Christians attribute, in the time of Moses, right, as part of the plagues. Similarly says, and the crucifixion. But the main three days of darkness comes from Catholicism, a prophecy of... Um, Padre, what was his name? What was his name? Somebody help me out here. Padre, uh, what was it? Somebody. Anybody help me out? Can somebody help me out here? Somebody help me out here. Padre Paya? What was it? Padre, um, I'm, I'm getting there. It's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. Bear with me. Bear with me. Um... Somebody says, Pio, is, could that be yet? Could that be yet? Padre, who was that? Oh, my goodness. I, I, I know Anna uh, Taigi. That was one, Anna Taigi. Um, but all of that came from, uh, uh, what was the guy's name? What was his name? What was his name? What was his name? Anyway, oh, there it is. Somebody said, I did have it, didn't I? Somebody says, Malachi Martin. No, 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 no. That was back way before that. Way before Malachi Martin. Way before that. He, I think a lot, that, well, it was several people responsible for it, for their um, defining of it. But the person had an insight, right? That's where it started from. The person had an insight. They gave a prophecy, the three days of darkness, right? And uh, they, they, it, they, 1837, right? 1837, in fact, the original prophecy said only blessed candles will work. No other light source could be in the house. There'd be no electric power. Demons will be in the thickness of the darkness. That's what was said back then. Demons would be in the thickness of the darkness. Um, and the, the person who had this said that God used a luminous disc to reveal prophetic things to her, Right? She could discern secrets, uh, secret the secret thoughts of people who were present or far away through this disc that was given to her, through a disc, through an item. I'm just telling you guys the, the real deal here, okay? This is real deal. And she could see events of the past and the future with this disc that was given to her. That's the real deal. 
It's the real deal. And so this continued. It was also refined. And so it picked up a lot of momentum. Okay? But that's the real history of it. Do I agree with the three days of darkness? Uh, listen, I can only agree with things that God gave me. I know nothing about three days of darkness. I know absolutely nothing. I had a dream one time that I told everybody in COT about many, many years ago. And it was not three days of darkness. It was 30 and 7 days. I heard I was laying in my bed in a trumpet blue right through my bones. And it woke me up. Right? All of a sudden, darkness was everywhere. Darkness, this blackness. And I heard people calling me this name that I'm not called by in this dream which happens to be the name they call me by now. And they were saying, ask him, how long are we going to be in this darkness? And I was thinking at the time, why are these people asking me? How do they even know me? And this voice told me 30 and 7 days. It was a darkness where nobody could do anything. And I perceived that voice to be an angel. Because it did not speak like any human being could ever speak. It was perfect. It was just perfect. And it was full of purpose. It had purpose in every, it had purpose in it. But I was given 30 and 7 days. It was a darkness nobody was prepared for. Nobody was prepared for it. 37 days it lasted. The blackness. Nobody could see. When I say nobody could see, I mean nobody could see. 37 days. What could that actually be? That can be, any, that can be a time when it's very dark in the world. That can be a time when things have totally gone haywire, when there's no, you know, no, there, there's no uh, law-abiding citizens on the top side or something. Everything has gone to pot. We're without a leader. Who knows? I know it was chaos, and I know that people were frightened and scared. They were. Hmm? I know they were. That's what I was given. I can't comment on something God did not give me. I can't do that. Three days of darkness, the Lord never gave me that. He never did. He gave me 37 days. That's what he gave me. And so I have to act on that. I have to act on what the Lord gave me. I really do. There have been people over countless years since, what, 1837, worried about three days of darkness, and they never endured it. Right? That's why I always trust what the Lord gives me. I have to act on that. Right? I may not, you know, if there if there is a three days of darkness, I may never ever see it, and you may not see it either. But if the Lord gave it to you, then you might want to do something about it. This is about us being real with the Lord. If the Lord gives us something, why would we ever throw that away to act on somebody else's stuff? Right? Somebody says, do you think we're on track for the stone steps? The stone steps, it's not, hear me about the stone steps. I trust what the Lord gave me. I do not believe that's going to fail. I don't. And it's been, it's been, listen, ever since the Lord had given, gave me that, have we not seen the prosecution of political people? Have we not seen the prosecution of actors and actresses? In fact, all the people that you can see on television, people have been prosecuting, haven't you? So it's leading up to something is what's happening. It's leading up to, and when, it, when that happens, and the way the Lord works with me is when one, one time has come and it is fulfilled, I get further instruction until it's fulfilled. I'm not going to get any more instruction. Right. I know what's coming. I have to prepare for that. Do you not know that riots? Listen to this. Because the place of the stone steps I saw looked like a city. Do you know that riots have begun? In the very place I suspected that that was functioning in. It's already happening. The people are, are incredibly biased. And if you don't think this election is going to set this world on fire, see, people think it's going to be good. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm telling you, it is not. It will be grotesque. 
right now we're at a point. If one side wins, the other side is going to burn it down. Period. Hope you know that. I really do hope you know that. I also hope you know. It's almost like foreseeing something that you can't stop. People will not stop doing what they're doing. There are folks who are so vile in their speech. I mean, they are vile in their speech. Vile, do you hear me? And when people hear the vileness, you have a choice. Because when you start hearing the vileness, that's just, that's nothing more than the Lord showing you what is what. When the person does not apologize for their vileness, the Lord will then prove to you what is what. And it's going to be up to you what you do with it. But the Lord will never have you ignorant concerning what we're really facing. And in this, many things will be uncovered. You're going to find that a lot of people do not care about the vileness. They only want their way. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't, if the vileness, the Lord said, be holy in all manner of communication. And there are certain types of vileness that can only come from a vile spirit. I just want you to know that. So in that respect, I'll never, I don't excuse that. Plus, I know the full story of too many people. And the one thing I hate to see are people who love the Lord. I know we're all embedded in this world. I know. I know we have a responsibility to do things I know. But it has turned to worship. And every time that has happened, the Lord has dealt with it. People are going to fall right directly in the hands of the Most High. And that is not a good thing. He must correct the path of his people or they will be lost. They will be. So how the Lord will deal with this is not going to be pretty. It's not. He must do it openly. He must make do exactly what he said he would do is make a show of it. He's going to have to do it. Because people are not turning back to Christ. They keep turning to flesh. And if you don't like who they like, they will curse you out right there in front of God, Christ, and everybody else. I have never seen anything like it. Never. I've never seen it. So, you better believe something no one expected. It must come to pass. And this is it. This is it. So I hope that you guys are prepared. I really do hope you are. Somebody says, Mike, what do you think about the time frame, what it looked like for all this stuff kicking off with binary system, Mark the Beast, Jerusalem? Oh, here's, here's Watchman 88. Here's something in Revelation and in Matthew and in Mark and in Luke that, that we have to really pay attention to. Did you notice that the world never took notice of anything happening until it overtook them? They couldn't evade it. They couldn't run from it. They couldn't do anything. It just overtook them because they did not see the subtlety of the signs. In other words, what the Lord is doing is he's showing us the time has already begun, but he is not showing the world. He's not showing the world. He's showing us. Every time we see a subtlety, we indeed see it, and we're trying to place it. I believe that's the mistake. See, if you see these subtleties that have been seen, th these subtleties that we see have never been seen nor talked about on this level at any point in history. Never. We're seeing it collectively, and that changes everything. It couldn't just be this little group seeing it, and the end would come, no. It couldn't be this one thing, and the end would come, no. 
the Lord said, when you see all these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. He said, when you see them begin to come to pass, begin the subtleties. He said, the world's not going to get a warning. They knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The world is not going to notice it until it overtakes them. Right now they can't see it. The conditions are awful. They're awful. What you see on television is awful. What you hear on your radios is grotesque. The representations of Christ that I continue to see through m much media is blasphemous at best. Men have no fear of the living God. Even more have no identification with the living God. The consummation has already begun. But it was never meant to be noticed by the world. It was only meant to be noticed by us. That we would stand up and get our houses in order. That our spirits would be troubled enough that we would get up and do those last minute tasks. That we would go forward in truth. See, a lot of people, they're always waiting on something big to happen so they can say, now I can use all of my faith. Now I can throw, I, I don't have to worry about what the world is saying. It was never going to work that way. Think about this. A lot of people would love it if the whole world started burning right now because then they could act in their capacity with Christ without their families laughing at them, without people pointing at them. Right? Without them being the loser among so many people. It was never meant to happen that way. Why not? It was always meant to happen when the world thought nothing was happening and they would see you, the believer, doing those things that are in the Word of God but are crazy to the world. Why? Because the Lord said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the angels. If we hide that in fact we are faithful and in servitude to the Most High in view of men, if we hide that, then we're also denying Christ before men, aren't we? But if the world looks at us and say they do that same thing that, the, that Christ did, Christ already told us. That the world hated him and it's going to hate you too. That they'll never be able to see who you are until you are revealed at his coming. The moments are now. But people are trying to save face in their careers. By keeping others guessing. Every prophecy of flesh is going to fail. Only the word of the Lord will be fulfilled. If we operate, let us operate in truth. Right now. Because that time is closer than any of us can suspect. This is not like last year. Or the year before that, or the year before that, it is not. But we have some decisions to make. I pray we do them quickly. 
folks, I'll be back in a minute to answer some more of your questions. I know it's past the time, but I'm going to answer a couple of more when I come back. I'll be right back in a few minutes. Did that again, didn't I? Okay, guys. The question is, and it's a good one, what is binding, what is binding and loosing in the Bible? I think it's a good question. I do. So, since you asked, I'll attempt to answer. All around Christ, people were, and he asked them, his disciples, who do you say that I am? They gave their answers. Some said prophet. Right? Some said a great person. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But Peter said, Peter said, you are the Christ. Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my Father in heaven. And upon that rock, I will build my church. Upon what rock? The rock of the revealing of Jesus by Adonai, by the living God, to a person. That's how the church is established and is composed of those who recognize the Messiah, not from proof, but by the living God. And he said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in the heavens. Listen to me. He wasn't speaking to Peter, the individual. No. He said, the church is comprised of those of whom God has given revelation that Jesus is the Messiah. All of those who believe that, collectively whatever they bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever they loose is loosed. They have authority. Not the one individual, not any one of us have that authority. But the entirety of the ecclesia has that authority. No individual can have that authority because of contradictions, because of disagreements. But when all those of whom God has given revelation of Jesus Christ, when they bind anything, it will be bound everywhere. And all those who have revelation of Jesus Christ here on this earth, when they lose anything, it will be loosed everywhere. Collectively, not individually. Do you see that? That's what that is. So in fact, the ecclesia, the church, composed of those of whom God has given revelation of Jesus of Nazareth. They have full authority, even right now. Why do you think Satan works so hard to divide those who truly believe that Jesus is Lord? And they don't believe by proof they were born with that revelation within them. Satan will do everything he can to keep you divided. Now you know why. And because of that principle of collective authority, now you know why. He uses propaganda to convince the masses. Satan of himself can't do anything. But what he does, he does through people. That's what he does. And that's why he does it. He can't do anything by himself. Alone he is nothing. But if he can convince the whole, 
to act. That's how they make their dark changes in the earth. So that means all of you who truly identify Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Messiah. And nobody can convince you otherwise, not even the evidence, but you truly believe that Jesus is the Messiah and you have always believed he is the Messiah. You are the real ecclesia. Not everybody who goes to church, no. Those who identify Christ as the Messiah, and I've done so from day one. You are the ecclesia. And the Lord will in no wise cast you out. And he will raise you up the last day. And it is God's will that he not lose any of you. And he will not. Because if it's one thing you can never do, you can never not believe that Jesus is Lord. Now you know. Now you know. Okay, folks. That's it for tonight. Thank you for that question. That was a good question. I do appreciate that one. But it's also a sad one. It is. But we endure. Because one day, that same Ecclesia will be the bride. You know what the New Jerusalem descends out of heaven? It will not be empty. It will be fully occupied. With those who are faithful. With those who are true. Keep believing. Keep believing. Keep believing. And you'll not be lost. That's your Lord's promise to all of those who continue to believe. He is your Savior. Remember, we're not our own saviors. But he is our Savior. God bless and keep all of you guys. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow right here at COT. I'll be in the chat room prior to the nightly thing. So when I'm in the chat room, guys, if I'm not testing and you want to ask questions, I'll be available, okay? I'll be in there. All right? If you guys see me, ask away. That's why I'll enter in there in the first place. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. God bless.